So this is your brief chance to see me in action because I may not appear again for some months. So I welcome you all to the meeting and I also went to a conference called Stick the Speaker Mode, <laughs> called District 91 Conference and I do recommend it if you can get along, you meet some great people, you have some great speeches and you may even pick up some great tips as well. So it's always worth going along if you can to a district conference. I get one of these each month, and I'm sure you do too. Mm -hmm. I read it over my cup of coffee, I may miss things, but I want to just draw your attention to this article, The Power of Storytelling. Mm -hmm. Because tonight we are going to hear some great stories from some great speakers. We have some wonderful speakers coming up tonight. But before the speakers, we have to introduce one or two administrators that help the evening go. And the first one is our grammarian. 
So to tell us a little bit about what he does and what he will be doing for us, may I have a big round of applause for Wasif. Hello everyone, my name is Vasif. I'll be the Bulgarian for today. Um, so let me first start off by sort of listing down for those who are new what the Grammarian does. Whereas basically, the Grammarian has two functions. One is to introduce new words uh, to the members. And the word of, for today is spurious. Um, the second thing is that um, my job is to listen and uh, note the use of English, anything which might be awkward or incorrect or anything which might be sort of, you know, um, um, creative use of words, I would be keeping a tab of how many times the word of the day, which is spurious, is used. Um, in the end, perhaps a brief note about the word of the day is spurious. It's an adjective. Uh, it means not genuine, not sincere, or not authentic, based on false ideas or bad reasoning. An interesting fact is it's, it's based on the word Latin, which is spurious, spelled slightly differently. And what that word means is illegitimate. And in the Roman days, uh, for any illegitimate child, they would use the surname Spurius before that. And uh, in fact, there was a Roman magistrate called Spurius Lucretius, you know, temporary magistrate. But you know, it's an interesting fact that I'll share with all of you guys. So I look forward to uh, listening to all of you. And uh, thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. So, no more spurious comments, but right to the point. The next person we will be listening to is our timer. I want to tell you how important it is to be a timer and keep within the time allowed. I would ask for a large round of applause for Dominica. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Not a spurious word there at all. Right, so everybody can now sit and wait for a speech. And I have asked the speakers to give me an introduction about the talk we're going to give. Now the first speech, as it turns out this evening, is an icebreaker which means, as you know, this is their first speech talk. <laughs> the objectives are written on the agenda, speak before an audience, use speaking skills, and introduce yourself. So where can we go wrong? Owen is doing his icebreaker speech this evening titled Three Peaks, talking about a charity challenge he did years ago. He's asked us to pay particular attention to the rhythm and speed of his speech. Before we start, can I ask Owen to stand? So you all know who he is, and can I hear Owen? With a speech entitled Three Peaks, I give you Owen. Thank you very much, yes, it was the Tastemaster. So fellow Tastemasters, back in 2010, a number of, of my friends had recently joined the forces. So peers, um, so um, I really wanted to raise sort of some money, you know, for what they were doing. So my friend and I, so sort of peers, sort of decided, to, you know, sort of to raise some money. This was for a charity called uh, Safra. 
So SAFL was sort of set up during World War II and provides sort of support for anyone who has joined the forces uh, and as well as their families. We wanted to do something that was physically and mentally uh, sort of challenging and as well sort of something that would not take up too much time. So we decided to do the Three Peaks uh, sort of challenge. This is a well-known route where you climb the highest mountain in England, Scotland and Wales. So if this wasn't hard enough, we decided to make it slightly harder by cycling in between each peak rather than uh, sort of driving. The challenge was to see a, a sort of cycle over 500 miles and climb over 11,000 feet in six days. We started our challenge by climbing the highest mountain in Britain and Scotland, which is Ben Nevis. It would take us over seven hours and we'd be climbing for 4,500 feet. If you haven't been to Scotland, you must. The countryside is simply stunning and is teeming with wildlife. So after climbing at St Ben Nevis, we refuelled and started our cycle to Scarfell. And this is England's highest mountain located in the Lake District. Our cycle would last for three days, uh, sort of travelling over 100 miles a day. When we climbed to Scarfell, um, we had um, sort of extremely bad weather. At three and a half, uh, sort of, um, three and a half uh, sort of thousand feet, this was our, our sort of smallest mountain, but was probably one of our hardest. For most of the route, you're actually walking on exposed rock, which is sort of slippery when wet due to the conditions. It would take us two days to cycle onto our next and final mountain, which is sort of Snowdon, located in Wales. By the time we got there, we were exhausted. So Snowdon is uh, one of the few mountains you can actually get a train to the top of. So given so how so tired we were, this was you know, extremely tempting at the time. <laughs> so Snowdon is just over 4,200 foot, and it took us six hours to climb. So the entire trip so it took us so six days, and so it saw us so travel over 100 miles a day on, on our bikes. We consumed over 30,000 calories, and raised over £2,000 for SAFA. So mentally, this was by far the hardest thing I've ever done, and it would be sort of some time before I do anything sort of so silly. And I haven't been on a bike since. Thank you. Well, I'm put to shame. What a tremendous story. Thinking of cycling up all that. No, you didn't cycle up the mountains, but you walked a tremendous long way. Right. Timekeeper, please, can I have one minute for the evaluators to write their comments? Thank you. Your attention please. After a brilliant speech, well, we move on to the other speeches. The serious speeches. Some people need no introduction, so I, I won't give them one. But we now have the pleasure of Glenn Savage talking to us on a project from the advanced book. He's doing a project on the advanced manual communicating on TV. And his project is instructing on the internet. You jump tips you can see on your agenda, learn how to develop and present the effective training program on the web, and receive personal feedback. So be ready with your feedback, folks, because I know you've all watched things on YouTube and are experts at how it should be done. <laughs> In this project, Glenn will not be here speaking. 
but rather we'll be watching a video that he's made previously. And it is the recording which will be evaluated. So grab your popcorn, <coughs> settle back for a speech, a big round of applause for a story called Engage the Enemy, Glenn Savage. This will contain a spurious moment or two, which yeah, will be self-evident. Sorry? Try and remind people of the objectives. Okay. Yeah. I think it's just important for this project to, to remember that this is Glenn doing a training program for us. Okay, so I want you to think about that. When we do the evaluation, I'm going to be asking you to give me your thoughts as well. So just think, is he actually teaching us and training us in a way that's working for you? Yeah? Good evening. Would you like to know the secret to engaging your audience so they're really interested in hearing what you have to say? Then all you have to do is listen to me for the next five minutes and I'll share six ways that you can engage your audience and make them want to listen. Excuse me. Yes, what? I can't tell you by that I was talking to this audience. Well, you may have been talking to this audience, but not any longer. Goodbye. <laughs> now, as I was saying, you have the first 30 seconds to really engage your audience, to create energy and interest in your talk. Just like this plane taking off. so they want to know everything you've got to say. So let's look at six techniques. Firstly, do something dramatic. Imagine if you were talking about safety in the home and fire. Start with fire. It's really grabbing. Or if you were talking about the dangers of a nuclear war, why not something really dramatic like a nuclear bomb going off? It's quite riveting and engaging, and they will find the shock factor very good. Next, what about a shocking statistic or fact? For example, in the five minutes that I speak to you, 1,200 people will have heart attacks. Or, did you know, in the UK, there are 65,000 children in the care system? Or, perhaps, every minute, an area of rainforest the size of a football field is destroyed. That's 31 million football fields of rainforest destroyed in a year. Thirdly, ask a rhetorical question. We all know, give them a question that doesn't need an answer, but importantly, pause to let them think about it before you go on. A couple of examples. Is there life on other planets? Or, oh. why are some businesses more successful than others? Or, why do some leaders inspire more? Pause not too long in case somebody in the audience decides to answer. But rhetorical questions are great. Next, a powerful quote. Example, experience is simply the name we give our mistakes. Quotes grab people, and my suggestion is you start to develop a library of different quotes for different occasions. I'm quite a fan of Oscar Wilde, who comes out with some really thought-provoking, witty, and challenging things like the old believe everything, the middle-aged suspect everything, and the young know everything. Or, how about, it's absurd to divide people into good and bad. People are either charming or tedious. Powerful quotes. 
arouse curiosity, tease them, lead them on. They won't know what's coming. An example, 